What are we doing, Damon? What's going on guys? Today we have another install. Thank you to Madness Auto Works. They sent over some lowering springs for the Julia. So I'm super stoked to get this thing sitting a little lower. And uh, we went ahead and already installed the front. So now we're gonna film us doing the other front so we can show you how we do it. Kind of, it's not gonna be like a full on DIY, but it is just gonna be kind of a, you know, we show you what we did. And then we'll do, an on-road review, so that'll be the fun part. And we'll see how she looks. But huge thank you to Madness. They always hook it up. And also, they did send me some awesome carbon fiber door handles, so I highly recommend that you check those out. I'll be sure to link everything in the description. But yeah, let's get to it. Boom. Alright, since I said it's not a full DIY, I'm just going to tell you what we're going to take off. So, upper ball joint bolt, it's an E socket, and then another on the back side, uh, sway bar end link, lower strut bolt, the, obviously the upper three, and then there is a sensor that will connect your, it's like a brake pad sensor, it's on the back side, it's connected to the strut, we just take it off so we don't damage it, and that's it, and then we'll just okay this is the pad sensor it's connected to the caliper the back side and then through this little hole there is the abs sensor which we also disconnected it's this little guy these are what you're going to need to take off the front so it is a 14 wrench for the E socket on the on the bottom. This is the 16 millimeter. And then we used an E socket, which is an E14, I believe. Yeah, E14 for the top. An Allen, which is an H5. A, uh, Torx T40, 17 millimeter, 16 millimeter. And that's it. And then some spring compressors. Freaking get it! Get it! What you do is line up the ends of the springs against where they butt up. That's gonna help you align the whole shock body once you start putting it back in the car. Um, also, this boot at the bottom has a little peg that it sticks out of right here. And there's only one way to get that one set up. So that's gonna help you out. Okay, so now we're onto the rear. So me and Ben already did the passenger side rear, and uh, honestly, I think the fronts are easier. Ben, would you say so? Yeah. Yeah. Fronts are a little easier. This is less less to take apart, but more difficult. So definitely gonna show you well, as much as I can because it requires a lot of two people, so it's hard to film it. But yeah, we'll, we'll, we'll show you. It's, it's not fun. Okay, so what you're going to want to disconnect for the rear lower control arm. Then you're going to go your sway bar. You can disconnect it from the top. And then where your shock connects, up top, three bolts, and down below as well. Disconnect that one. And then you can pry it and pull the spring up. All right, so let's get the old spring out. The new spring, the top rubber bushing mount, uh, make sure you spin it into the spot. Your spring will sit against a little rubber like kind of stopper. Same for the bottom, but the bottom one has a little post, a little rubber post that comes out. And if you look at the bottom of the control arm, there is a hole 
So that little rubber post goes in the hole. That's just so when you're putting it in, just make sure you line those up. And if you look at the spring, it's not perfectly like straight. That's it's great. got a slight curve to it. So that's to help you line it up. So sick. So sick. Yeah, you're gonna have to drop the e-brake. Huh? You're gonna have to drop the e-brake to see any difference. Oh yeah. But the front though, looking good. Yeah, we'll start it and roll it. And see where it's sitting. And we'll drive it and then see where it's sitting again. What's up guys? Last time you saw me, me and Ben had just lowered the car, got it off the jacks saw what it looked like but it's the springs still needed to break in a little bit so they can sit in their final position so I've been driving it around for about a week kind of just letting the springs do their thing seeing how it felt so I can give you guys my honest opinion and uh, I think it feels amazing I um, the car is not too bouncy you can go into corners a little harder there's less body roll uh, you don't feel every single little bump like you're you know, riding on chopped springs or something, or in a slammed, slammed Miata or something like that. No, it it feels pretty close to factory, but you can definitely tell that you are on lowering springs. It's not a super plush ride, but it doesn't, it's not annoying to drive the car. It actually is more fun to drive the car now that it's a little better handling. For how long it took us to install the springs, I'd say it's pretty pretty well worth it. Uh, the rear was kind of the more pain in the butt area to install, but I think if you have a friend or if you have a lift, it'd be a whole lot easier to do. Uh, but we got it done. We're, in, we're by no means super mechanically inclined, but you can put these springs in yourself for sure, and you'll definitely enjoy how they feel make driving the car just that much more enjoyable. All right, so that's the end of this video. We made it all the way to the end. Thank you very much. Um, there's gonna be a ton more videos coming on this car, but it will be on this channel. This is the channel I'm posting all the new videos on. So make sure you subscribe, helps me out. Make sure you follow along and uh, go give Madness Auto Works some love on their channel as well, because they've, they've been helping me out for a long time and they're the ones who supplied the parts for this car, the springs and the handles. Um, they're awesome. They're great people, They'll, you can call them, answer any questions that you have. So, thank you for watching again. I'll be sure to link both the, both the parts in the description. And that'll be it. See you in the next video.